The London and North Western Railway formed in 1846 from merging with three companies, the Grand Junction Railway, London and Birmingham Railway and the Manchester and Birmingham Railway. Their network was a vast one, covering from London Euston to Northampton, Birmingham, Crewe, Manchester, Liverpool and her docks, Holyhead to Scotland, Dumfries, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Perth, Dundee, Aberdeen. The company lasted from 1846 to 1923 when it merged as part of the LMS company, therefore making it the largest of the big four companies from 1923 to 1948, merging with the Midland Railway and a few other smaller railways in the Scottish area. The Prince of Wales class famously the first of the locomotive class number 819, aptly named the Prince of Wales. Union Mills loco is number 86 Mark Twain. Hello everyone and welcome back to Mark on Track where today we're going to be looking at a slightly different locomotive in a different scale. Today we're looking at an N-gauge locomotive and this locomotive is a different one. It's not your average one you find on the market. This one here is by another company, not Graham Farish or Dapple. This is by a company called Union Mills. The Union Mills are based on the Isle of Man and they produce a wide range of ready-to-run locomotives of locos that haven't yet been made into the ready-to-run market. And this one today is one I got not so long ago, but it's quite special. So let's have a look at it. Today's locomotive is a London Northwestern Railways Prince of Wales class 460. Prince of Wales class was a sort of express passenger train which ran out of Euston, done the runs to Liverpool, Holyhead, Scotland and beyond. They were quite a powerful machine to have. They were, like other locomotives, were named after various famous peoples, such as people in Parliament, poets, um, battleships of the Royal Navy. They were built from around 1911 to 1923. Um, there are none survivors, as with a lot of the London North Western Railways class, there are only a few surviving examples. This particular class was cut up by around 1949. And let's have a look at it today. So first of all, take it out of the very nice Uni Mills box here which happens with a little photograph of the locomotive and the product company name Uni Mills the cat's box tissue paper bubble wrap also comes with a nice little piece of paper on the entire history of the class and also details of the company at the bottom, Union Mills, which I'll talk about in a minute. Locomotives in here, nicely wrapped up. Bubble wrap. I'm going to put it on top of here for a moment. And here it is. And there we are. This is a really nice locomotive. This is number 86, and this one was called Mark Twain, named after the famous American author and poet who famously wrote the story Huckleberry Finn. Now, for a lot of locomotives, uh, when it comes to ready to run, um, this one is really nice. I mean, it's very, it has got the exact shape. It's a bit crude, but you can always adapt and modify this locomotive. But to me, this is really nice because this is in pre group in livery which is the London North Western Railway's Blackberry Black, which was their sort of livery take with a sort of a red and white lining around the locomotive and the red and gold nameplates, the uh, red and gold number plates and gold nameplates along the slashes here. And this is just a really nice locomotive. They have produced several more of these in different variants. There's one in LMS Crimson, there's one in LMS Black, and funny enough, there's one in British Railways black with the early emblem which was a bit strange because I don't think that class did survive but it's your own layout rule one run what you like it's a really nice locomotive you've got a very strange front underhook coupling here at the front which you can remove you've got a standard rapido coupling I believe at the back here uh, the locos are tender drive the motors in this part of, is a sort of can motor and it's connected via this wire into the locomotive to pick up from the pickups on the front of the train. The front of the train is free rolling, but they are really strong pullers. I've got a few of these in the southern variety, but they can pull a lot of locomotives. They can pull a lot of wagons and a lot of coaches. They can pull up to about 16, give or take. So you've got a really strong locomotive here. They can be DCC chipped, yet um, 
that would need hard wiring. Um, there are a few hints and tips up about how to hardwire a DCC um, DZ chip into one of these from Digitrax. Uh, so it's worth looking into that if you do want to digitally um, chip this locomotive. Personally, I think they run just as smoothly on DC. So let's have a little closer look at it. closer inspection of the locomotive, the coal load here is moulded, um, it is moulded, you can't remove it because it's part of the, it's a same cast moulding as the tender, um, so you couldn't really remove it because the motor's directly underneath this, but you could add a small amount of coal dust here just to add a bit of depth, but I think it's really nice, it's got a nice shape, a nice feel to it, and it does start, and it does seem to slope down into where the pan would be, where the fireman would scoop it out. The cab detail is, well, there's not really any cab detail, and the most intruding thing about a lot of uni mills is the connecting cable here, but there is a, I believe, a way of shortening this, so there are people who have bought uni mills mo locos, shorten the wire so it tucks neatly under here on the drawbar, so you'll be able to fit a crew, a bit of plastic card so you can have a foot full plate here, and you could probably add things like handrails that would be here, and here, and probably a few handrails here if you really want to, but the thing is, remember when you start to do this in a smaller scale, you've got to take extra care when you start moving the model around, otherwise it's going to go snap and then you're going to swear a blue streak. You've got a nice whistle up here, um, obviously it's safety valve, dome, chimney. You've got the very nice printing, a nice relief on this printing here of the name Mark Twain. Um, you, I don't know if you could change the nameplates. Um, I'm not too sure off by heart if there is a company that does um, etch nameplates if you wanted to make it into any one of the number of the uh, Prince of Wales glasses. But I'm sure there's a way. If we just turn it just towards the camera, show the front of the locomotive. Very nice smoke box door. Very nice buffers here, red. The strange hook here for the front coupler which you could remove. Um, there are things like footsteps here, there would obviously be footsteps here on each side of the front of the buffer beam and obviously a few extra handrails but like, again it's up to you if you want to model that because remember this is a smaller scale so it's going to start to get a bit tricky. All in all it's a really nice locomotive and it's again it's a different sort of era and it's a different locomotive company and it's a shame that when it comes to ready to run they they, uh, some people say that they don't really like to, uh, they reckon that pre-grouping wouldn't sell when actually it would because as soon as I first said they'd done this particular type of locomotive in this particular livery I was on the phone as quick as that and it arrived as quick as that and I ran around the track as quick as that. So it's, a really, so it's up to you if you want to get one and if you want to do LMS Crimson there's one for you in that and one in LMS Black and BR Black as I said. It's a shame that any of the real locomotives sadly did not survive because if they did in the next five years many of them would have celebrated the centenary of the first world war because one was named after the anzac regiment one was named after gallipoli which of course in by 20 by gallipoli by 2015 will be its hundredth anniversary since the battle so it would have been nice if there was one still around and in operation but again when things went they did go so there you go it's, a, it's, it's again, it's a nice locomotive. You've got a nice rapido coupler here, which I assume you could change for any shorter couplers like short shank or magnetic coupler. There's a way of doing it. Uh, really nice wheels as well, free rolling. It's a nice 460. It's good to know that there are people out there that are willing to do this, to do a locomotive of a completely different type, different company, and they're for you to purchase. So yes, and that's how I see it on the test track.
Union Mills um, hasn't been going that long, or at least not to my knowledge. Um, I only heard about it when I started to get back into Engage when Engage UK showed a video and I saw a very nice, what looked like a T9. And I asked him, what company is that? And he said, it was Union Mills. And I looked it up and they did do a T9, the Greyhound. And he does quite a number of locusts. I think he does about 10 and they're usually in three different variants. Sometimes in their group in livery, um, either wartime group in livery or nationalisation with the early crest with the lion. He very rarely does them in this sort of pre-group in livery, although he does do, I believe, a, this is for you, a Callum of Somerset and Dorset. Um, he does do a Somerset and Dorset 2P in SDJR blue, or unless that's a bit mistaken, but you can, he doesn't have a website, um, which is a bit of a shame. The only way to contact him, he does have an email, which I'll post in the link below. He does have an email address and you can call him up. Uh, he's very nice to speak to. Although by the time this video is out, it'll be Christmas, so probably after Christmas. But if you just leave your name, details, and they're, they're not exactly too expensive to buy. They're, quite, they're, they're a lot cheaper than most ready to run. I mean, this locomotive here was about £82, plus £3 posting packaging. So that's really reasonable compared to what you get with today's ready to run. He does things like B12, so if you wanted to do the North Norfolk Railway, you could get a B12. He does the Super D, which is obviously the heavy freight loco from the London Northwestern. He does do the London Northwestern cauliflower, but in LMS, so if you wanted to do an LMS version, you could. He does also the 3F, the little goods engine, until Graham Farish decide to do one in Engage. You could do one there. Uh, he does do a 4F as well. Um, of course, now Farish have announced he's going to be doing a, uh, they are going to be doing a 4F. And also, for those, again, who are into the Somerset and Dorset and the LMS, he does do a 7F as well. So, again, they are ready to run, very easy, very easy going. They need not that much maintenance, maybe just a bit of machine oil if they do go a bit croaky. And they can be modified by shortening the wire and a few extra lining and painting. So it's completely up to you. It's almost like the model's there, but you can just add to it, just like with the other ready-to-run models on the market. He does also do for us Southern fans, there's not many of us, but we are growing. He does do a T9, a Drummond 700, which Hornby have now announced is going to be in double O, so good news there. And he also does an Adams Goods locomotive, which is an 060, I believe, which was another sort of strange little locomotive that I had in the Southwestern. It'd be nice if he does do, if he is listening, if he does do a Brighton C2, or something Brighton related, you know, it'd be in my good books there. But no, I, I respect what he does, and he does provide for the market which is in need of a few more locomotives so uh, if the big manufacturers out there they'll take note of what people need but um, that's my view on Union Mills and I certainly hope that you enjoy if you do decide to buy from them great if you don't well find somewhere else or try and scratch build good luck um, but yes a really nice company to get mo lo locos from really powerful so thanks for watching